This screencast covers the materials from Module 6, Lesson 1, where we construct a coordinate system using a line. Okay, we have something resembling a number line here. Uh, we're going to find some other examples that are a little different from the number lines we're accustomed to. First of all, we notice that our number line has these units labeled 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we need to figure out what these intervals in between are these tick marks as we call them. We notice that between 0 and 1 we have 1, 2, 3. So we can determine the value of each one of these as 1 third. So this would be 1 third. This would be 2 thirds. 1 is the same as 3 thirds and this would be 1 and 1 third, etc. I'm not going to label all of these. So let's now uh, look at the task here. It says each shape was placed at a point on number line S, give the coordinates for each point below. The first one is the X. We see that the X is directly on the 3. So that's simple enough. We'll just uh, write a 3 in the blank. Let's go to B. We have a star. And again, I've labeled that portion of the number line. And we see that the star lies on 2 thirds. So we'll write in 2 thirds. The circle, we see that the circle is uh, beyond the one, uh, 2, it's uh, less than the 3, so the whole number portion is 2, and we're up 1 of these tick marks here, so it's 2 and 1 third. And finally the square, we see that the square is between the 4 and the 5, so the whole number portion is 4. We have Four and one third, four and two thirds. So the answer is four and two thirds. Okay, we have a number of different number lines here. Uh, uh, some of them fairly complex. We'll start with A. It asks us to plot a point A so that its difference, distance from the origin is two. The origin is zero, whether we're working on a coordinate plane or a number line. So we can see that these A and B have a zero labeled. The C and D don't, but we'll figure out uh, where the origin is, at least what direction on that uh, number line that it is. Looking at A, we can see that not all of these are labeled. We have a zero and a three. And we'll have to figure out what these other units are. Well, if I look at this, I can see that I can go one hop, two hop, three hops. That means each one of those hops is equal to one whole number. So we could label this one one, this one two, and we can continue four, five, and finally six. We want to plot A so the distance from the origin is two. Put our dot there, label it A. Let's look at plot R again. We have our origin here, and not everything is labeled. We have our one-half, and we have our three-halves. Well, if we look at this, we can see that we go one hop, it is one-half. A second hop would then be two-halves, which is the same as one, so I'll label that one. And let's just make sure this is consistent. Uh, one, or two-halves, plus one-half is three-halves. Very good. And we can label this one two. And this one, if we want to remain consistent, we can do five halves, and we'll label this three. We want to find the distance from the origin of five halves. That's right here. And we can label that R. Going to C and D. It says lay, uh, plot L so that the distance from the origin is 20. We don't have an origin, but we do have these values here. And we'll assume that this is 50 from the origin, this is 35. So the origin must be someplace along the line down this way. Well, let's look at uh, 50 and 35. I have one, two, three hops in between. I could, s uh, just assuming maybe uh, the next one is, this one is 45, 40, 35, okay, that works. So I'm going to label these. We don't always have to label them, but just for the sake of uh, clarity here. Uh, we have 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. So our point that is 
tw uh, 20 from the origin. It's right there. We'll label that L. Going on to D. Again, we don't have an origin here, so let's take a look at what we have. It says plot point T so that its distance from the origin is two-thirds more than that of S. All right. First of all, let's figure where the origin is. We have a 5, we have a 4 and a third, we have a 4. We know that the origin is down that way someplace. Now let's take a look at uh, our tick marks here. And we can see that we have one, two hops to get from four to four and one third. So each one of these must be worth one sixth. So I could label this four and one sixth. All right, so that means every two one of these uh, tick marks represents one third, or each one represents one sixth. Okay, so we'll start with four and one third. And we want two thirds more, th oh, excuse me, four and one sixth. Uh, we need to go two thirds more than that. Well, two thirds is the same as four sixths. So I need to go up four. So we'll one, two, three, four. We will put our uh, point there and we'll label that a T. Okay, uh, for number three here in the practice set, the problem set, is very similar to number three in the homework. Number line G is labeled from zero to six. Use number line G to answer the questions below. Uh, plot point A at three-fourths. Well, let's take a look at our number line here. We see that between zero and one, we have one, two, three, four intervals. Therefore, each one of these tick marks is worth one-fourth. So we have one-fourth, two-fourths, which is the same as one-half. And then we have three-fourths, and three-fourths plus one-fourth is one. So let's plot point A. And it says label a point B that lies at, or label a point that lies at four-and-a-half as B. So again, we'll take a look. We've got our four. Four and one-fourth, four and two-fourths, that's four and one-half. We'll label that B. Continuing, label a point C whose distance from zero is five more than that of A. That means five whole units. So I'm going to start at A. I'm going to go up one. Three-fourths plus one is one and three-fourths, plus two is two and three-fourths, plus three is three and three-fourths, plus four is four and three-fourths, plus five is five and three-fourths. We'll label that C. And the coordinate that we'll uh, write in the blank here is 5 and 3 fourths. It says plot point D, whose distance from 0 is 1 and 1 fourth less than that of B. Okay. Well, 1 and 1 fourth is the same as 5 fourths. So we'll just simply move down 5 fourths or 5 tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. Plotting it at three and one-fourth. And we'll label that D. And write in three and one-fourth. Uh, one thing I want to point about this number line, it, it's going in uh, the opposite from the traditional direction. Uh, so Number lines can go in any direction we want, and we saw in the previous problem that some were going uh, horizontally, some were going vertically, some were going diagonally. The distance from the distance of E from zero is one and three fourths more than that of D. Plot point E. Well, one and three fourths equals seven fourths. So we'll need to go up seven of those uh, tick marks. So we'll find D and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll label that. And we have E. Going down to F, what is the coordinate that lies halfway between A and D? I just want to point out that 
halfway is the same as the midpoint, and you'll see the word midpoint in your homework. Uh, don't get confused. Halfway between is the same as the midpoint. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's first identify our A and our D. So we're here, and we're here. So what we want to do is find the midpoint. So what I do is, and it's kind of hard to do here simultaneously, I'm going to go 1 toward D, 1 toward A. So now we're at 1 and 3. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more, and we end up right in the middle between these two. So we will label that at 2 as F. And we will give the coordinates for that as 2. So what do we need to do? We just need to go the same distance from both of the points that are designated to find the midpoint. There's other ways to do that, but uh, for, uh, for now, uh, just use the visual and the number line to help you with this. All right. Mrs. Fan asked her fifth grade class to create a number line. Lennox created the number line below. Parks says that the number line is wrong because numbers should always increase from left to right. Who is correct? Explain your thinking. Well, customarily, they are. Uh, we do go from left to right. But actually, we can go any direction we want, as we've seen th from the examples throughout uh, this particular lesson. They can go vertically, they can go horizontally, they can go diagonally, and they can increase or decrease in any direction. So... Lennox is fine. A pirate marked up the palm tree on his treasure map and buried his treasure 30 feet away. Do you think he'll be able to easily find his treasure when he returns? Why or why not? we got a little problem here. 30 feet away, but we don't know what direction. So I'm just going to say uh, this is our midpoint. And we'll just kind of draw a circle around that as best we can. Not a very good circle. But all these points would be about would be 30 feet away. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to, he needs to tell what direction from the tree to go. So he might say 30 feet to the north, 30 feet to the south, east, west, northeast, whatever, but he needs to give a direction.